Okay, I just want to start off this lesson by doing a little bit of review from algebra, um, particularly the distributive property and multiplying two variables. The first one is going to um, be using the distributive property. So whenever you have a set of parentheses, that's a quantity, and you want to multiply whatever's outside the quantity evenly to each number inside the quantity. So here you would take 6 times 6, which is 36, and 6 times a positive x, which is 6x, and you're done with the distributive property. And that all equals 90. Um, going through and solving the rest of it for x, we're going to subtract 36 from both sides, and we'll get 6x equals 54. Divide by 6 on both sides, which will leave us with x is 9. Okay, the next example is just working with a quadratic, which means you have a variable with a square. So this says x squared minus 7 equals 18, and our goal is to solve for x. So we're trying to isolate our x. So we're going to move this 7 to the other side by adding 7 to both sides, and we'll get x squared equals 25. If you're left with an x squared on one side and a number on the other, we take the square root of both sides to get x. So x is going to equal the square root of 25, which hopefully we know by now is 5. Okay, the next one is going to use distributive property and multiplying two variables. When you multiply two variables together, x times x, it's not 2x, which is a very common mistake. x times x is one number times itself, which means that number squared. So x times x is x squared. x times 4 is a positive 4x. That equals x squared plus 3x plus 10. I'm just bringing everything down from this right side. And then I'm just trying to isolate my x, so I'm going to move all my x squareds to one side, see if that helps. So I'm first going to subtract this x squared from both sides of my equation. Well, x squared minus x squared is 0, and x squared minus x squared is 0. So in this equation, I'm left with 4x equals 3x plus 10. And I would subtract 3x from both sides, so I get x is 10. And then for the last one, this is double distributing. When you have, let's say you have the quantity x plus 4 and we want to square it. That means we take the whole thing and multiply it to itself. And you will see this in this chapter. So this is the same thing as saying x plus 4 times itself x plus 4. So you might end up with something like this, whereas it would be a 4 here. So basically with this property, we need to make sure that each term is multiplied to each term. So x needs to go with x, which is x squared. x times x is x squared. x needs to go with the 2, which is a positive 2x. This 4 needs to go to the x, which is 4x. And this 4 needs to go with the 2, which is a positive 8. So now we've made sure that each number is multiplied to each other's number on the other quantity. So that will equal my right side x squared. Now I'm going to combine my like terms here before I do anything else. I have x squared and a positive x, positive 2x and a positive 4x. So that gives me a total of 6x's positive plus 8 equals x squared. Once again, don't shy away from the x squareds. If we subtract x squared from both sides of our equation, we end up with 0 here and 0 here. So 6x plus 8, and we can't just leave this blank, we have to actually place a value there, so that's 0. I'm going to then go ahead and subtract 8 from both sides. So I get 6x, come up here, 6x equals negative 8, divide by 6, I get x equals negative 8, 6, which reduces to negative 4 and thirds. Okay, segments in circles are going to have 
a lot of different properties. You're going to have to be able to recognize what kind of segments they are and be able to apply the properties in order to find missing values. Last chat or last class we talked about angle measures and arc measures and they were all in terms of degrees and the most we could have was 360 because we were dealing with circles. Now we're talking about segment measures in this part where it doesn't talk, we're not using degrees, we're not using angle measures, we're talking about segment lengths. So if you took a ruler and you measured the length of a segment, it's okay to get 400 centimeters, it's okay to get a million centimeters, whatever. It's a length, it's not a unit of um, degrees. Okay, the first property you're going to see is when you have two chords inside of a circle. Each chord, if they intersect, will form a segment. Segment AE, segment EB, segment CE, and segment ED. The property or the formula for these um, segments to figure out missing lengths is what I call part times part. So I take the part of this segment and I multiply it to the part of this segment equals the other part of the chord times its corresponding part. So if I use the letters that are given to name the segments, it would be part AE times the corresponding part EB equals part CE times its corresponding part ED. Okay, so this is the formula, and we'll try it out on the first example. In all of these examples, we're going to be finding x. So we do the same thing, part times part. So we can start with 3 times, times 8 equals part x times its corresponding part 4. Multiply everything out, 3 times 8 is 24, and 4 times x is just 4x. Divide both sides by 4, so x is 6. Alright, so I'd like you to try same exact type of problem right here. Pause the video and make sure you get what I get. You will get a decimal, and let's see what you do. Okay, and you should get that x is 16 fifths or 3.2. If you didn't, raise your hand or ask a neighbor. Okay, the next property applies when you have two secants, and they're going to end up forming um, segments. For example, you have segment AB that exists. Your paper should have an E here. You have segment AE that exists. You have segment EC that exists, and you have segment CD that exists. Okay, now this one and the next couple are a little bit trickier than the first example. For this one, you're going to take the outside part times the length of the whole segment, EB. So I call that the whole. Set that equal to the other outside. times the whole length of the segment ED. So as it applies to this picture here, outside would be EA times the whole segment, which you're going to see it as EA plus AB. Segment addition, EB equals EA plus AB. And that equals the outside of the other segment, EC, times the whole thing. So EC plus CD. Okay, so let's see that as an example. It's going to be the outside times the whole equals the outside times the whole segment. So I'm going to start up here. The outside is 4. 
the whole segment is 4 plus plus 6. That equals the other outside, 5 times the whole thing, which is 5 plus, it's a plus sign here, x. Okay, I'm going to um, go ahead and clean it up a little bit. 4 times 4 plus 6. Well, 4 plus 6 is 10. So we're going to do 4 times 10 equals 5 times 5 is 25. Then 5 times x is 5x. 4 times 10 is 40. That equals 25 plus 5x. I'm going to subtract 25 from both sides. So I'm going to get 15 equals 5x. So x is going to equal 3. All right, I'd like for you to pause the video and try the next example. Remember, it's the outside times the whole length equals the outside times the whole length. Pause your video and see if you get what I get. Okay, and you should have gotten that x is 29 fourths or 7.25. All right, if you didn't get that, raise your hand or ask a neighbor. You are ready to move on to the second video located under uh, Dropbox.